Hello, everybody. It's January 1st, 2020. Can you believe we made it this far? It, 2019 was a great year. I look forward to 2020 being just as great, hopefully better. I accomplished a lot in my personal life in 2019. I, I graduated college and got uh, my teaching license and got my first job as a teacher and Things are happening from there. I uh, just a lot of stuff. A lot of it's personal, so I'm not really going to go into too much detail. But it was a good year, and I'm sure 2020 is going to be just as great. So, not uncommon for people to set goals or resolutions for themselves in the new year. And I figure today is as good a day as any to do some for the actual channel. And for my collection, like what I'm, how, what kind of approach am I going to take for my collection? And I do this basically just to help keep myself on track because I, I just my tastes change or I get distracted easy when I, when I see something shiny and pretty soon I forgot what I was doing and then I look back and I thought, well, I was supposed to be doing this other thing and. Um, I didn't do it because I was distracted. So hopefully just, I wrote some things down and by doing that, it'll, it'll help me stay on, on track for what I want to do. So if you watched my video yesterday, you saw me fiddle around with this trivia thing I got for, for Christmas baseball trivia game. And it's really a two player game. Um, so I can't really like look at the questions without seeing the answers. So I can't play with you, but I figure whenever I think about it, we'll do one of these, um, we'll do one of these whenever I do a video and it'll be fun for you anyway. I don't think you can see the answer, but here we go. And I would classify this as difficult. I didn't know this or if I ever did, I forgot about it. So which slugger was the inspiration for the Louisville Slugger line of baseball bats? So I'm going to set that up back here. So hopefully I don't forget. If I forget to do the reveal at the end of the video, I will put it in the comments. How does that sound? Good. First order of business, our channel goals, my channel goals. So I talked about this the other day when I was about to do a Fairfield. And I know in the past I would start opening something and it could be a box break or anything. And I might say, oh, I'm going to I'm going to speed up here so I'm not wasting your time. And then I had this realization that you are watching this voluntarily. <laughs> if if I'm being too slow, you're just going to skip ahead. I do that on videos. There's no shame in it. And I don't need to apologize for for making a video. And I mentioned two of my favorite channels, those back pages and baseball collector, they just turn the camera on and talk until they've, they've exhausted the topic. And each time, I, I typically watch the whole video. I watch videos of those back pages where he doesn't even talk about baseball. And he's talking about basketball players I don't even know and products I'm never going to buy. But here I am, I'm still still interested in the information just because I can tell he's got a lot of knowledge and he's passionate about um, about sharing and I'm no different and you're no different. So that's to all of us. Let's just, um, we're not in any hurry here. I don't want to, I don't want to make a 30 minute video, but if I ever start talking in a video it ends up being 30 minutes, then so be it. What do you do? Number two, I'd like to do, I'd like to be more prepared when I, I start my videos. The big challenge for me is when I'm, when I'm doing a TTM and I, I open it live, not live to you, but as I'm recording it, I don't always know who I'm going to pull out. So if I pull out, you know, um, a, a car to somebody, I don't always have the information, uh, little career tidbits and, and all that stuff just totally ready to, to share with you. Um, some people... Um, Remember the great sports? Remember the great collecting? I'm sorry, maybe it's just remember the greats. But there's a channel where you know he'll get a TTM and he'll go into extensive, extensive information about the person, 
which is really awesome. I, I'm not really able to do that. But as far as like videos like this where I have more time to prepare, I sort of know what I'm going to say. I just want to get do a better job of, of doing that. So this one I put quality over quantity. And this could almost be... Um, I don't want to make a video just to make it. So I want to make sure that I that I have a fair amount of content. Every once in a while, I've already been doing this a little bit, I might get one TTM back. And I'm probably not going to make a video for one TTM. I'll, I'll wait a couple days till I have two or three and and do that then. Just It just makes more sense. I don't, I don't have to make a video every day. But we want some quality videos. So, so I'd like to also get better at doing more giveaways and just sharing my collection with you. I have so many things that I'm never going to use. I, 15, almost 20 years ago when I started doing TTMing, I just, I just sent out everything I could just because. And as a result, I have a lot of things that don't really fit in my collection anymore as my taste change and my style changes. And I also have non-signed stuff too. Anyway, uh, you know, I do I do one giveaway a month, and at the end of the month, and sometimes I break that into two or three lots. But I'm thinking we might end up doing more like five in the future, and maybe some more things. I have you know in April I'll have my one year anniversary, and um, yeah, the one other thought I'm going to go back a little bit. The other thing I wanted to say about this was, um, as far as the, the real inspiration for creating this card was uh, I don't want to get too 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 possessed or too obsessed rather with um, how many users I have and all that stuff. I want engagement from from you, which is what I get when you make comments, and just to know that someone's out there. And I'm pretty satisfied with like the view counts and 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 the comments and just knowing. I don't I don't need to be at a certain number. I'm not going to say that I want to be at 300 or 500 by the end of the year because it, it really doesn't matter to me. So anyway, and then four was just sharing more. And then I want to get better at commenting on other videos. I do watch a lot of videos, but I don't always just drop in a comment. And since I appreciate it when people comment on my videos, I want to get better at that just so people know I'm there and, and know that I care that they're that they're sharing their knowledge. And I've gotten, just since I decided to do this in the last couple days, I've watched a lot of videos over break, and I've gotten a little better at it already, so uh, pretty happy with that. Uh, before we start our collection goals, and I think I have six of these, and these are going to be a little more extensive because you finally are going to get to see some stuff here in a minute. Before we do this, let's do our trivia. Which slugger was the inspiration for the Louisville Slugger line of baseball bats? And the answer is Pete Browning. Um, this other question I can't really do because I think I'm supposed to have clues or something. So Pre Pete Browning was the inspiration. He was the slugger that was the inspiration for Louisville baseball bats. And I've heard this story before, but I honestly don't, I don't remember it. It's been a while. So... Collection goals, and these will be a little more interesting because, like I said, I have like cards to show you and um, details to share. So, first things first, um, I want to get not necessarily completed, but make way more progress in my 64 tops and 73 top sets. So, I'm going to pause and adjust my camera so I can sh show you uh, what how I currently have these done. Hold on here. Okay, I hope this works. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll still should work. So when I decided I wanted to get as many 64 tops signed as I could, I simply went out and got the cards of the players that signed. And then slowly over time, I got you know a couple hundred because those players signed. And what I started doing about maybe a year and a half ago was started filling in the set with non-signed cards so that at some point it'll be a full set this binder's falling apart that's okay at some point it'll be a full set of both signed and non-signed cards 
So just to give you some idea, um, you get to the high numbers, and yeah, there's some holes there. There's a Tito Francona. And here we have, yeah, starting to get to where there's a lot of spaces in the back, higher numbered. And then as you get closer to the front, there's almost a whole page that's signed. Um, you know, I have more and more cards, so I probably have, I don't know, 60% 60, 60 of the total set. And I think I have close to half of it signed. Um, maybe I'll uh, update my, not my spreadsheet, but maybe I'll put the numbers in the, in the comments below, or in the video description, rather. And anyway, I, I've got a lot of stuff in here, and I really... Love this set. It's one of my favorites. But I want to be able to open this up and look at a complete set that's both... Um, oh, I just sent to Tori some other card. I didn't know I had that. Well, hopefully he keeps signing. He's been a little spotty, but he's been returning cards. Um, oh, that's upsetting. Anyway, there's the Yogi Berra that'll never get signed. But uh, coolest one on the there's actually two really cool ones on the front pages. Uh, it's card number two, Gary Peters, Juan Pizarro, Camilo Pasquale. Card number six, Pasquale again, Jim Bunning, Dick Stigman. So that's the 64. And I think my first task will be to get a new, new binder because that's a mess. Okay, 73s. We'll just take a quick look here. And you know what these look like. Now, this one I've done a lot better job of of sort of filling in spots, obviously, because it's a lot more affordable. But uh, again, I want to open this up and have a complete set. And some of it will be signed and some of it will not. Rick Russell, Ron Blomberg, first ever DH. Belton, Bill Melton there in the middle. Dick Green. We got all sorts of stuff going on here. Denny Doyle. I think somewhere in here I have a whole page that's signed. And I always think that's really cool when you can complete a page. Daryl Evans, he's one of my favorite, one of my favorite players. But uh, yeah, again, I'll uh, figure out what I have percentage-wise and maybe post it in the description if I can be patient enough to wait to upload. If not, I'm gonna put together a checklist I have a checklist of what I have not signed, but I don't have a checklist of like total set. So that's something I need to get working on probably before I get carried away with picking stuff up because I'm going to obviously need to know what I need. So let me switch back to the other view here. One second. Okay. Welcome back. Okay. So that's the first collection goal of the year. So second thing. Just like with most collections, expenses is always an issue. I'm kind of a small time collector. There's, you know, entire months where I probably don't spend 20, 30 bucks on the hobby. And this next thing to complete it the way it is now, I'd probably need 500 bucks. So I have the uh, display case behind me with all my Hall of Fame autos in it, uh, on card autos rather. And what I want to do is get it so eventually they're all slabbed. So just so you know what we're looking looking at, here we go. Let's look at a couple. Lots of 64s. Now, so some of the gaps in the 64 set we were just looking at obviously would be filled, filled with these. Uh, I used somebody on sportscollectors.net to group submit. Here we go with some 73s. Did I say 74 when I showed these? 64, obviously. And I used somebody on sportscollectors.net to group submit with. And basically, he has it down to 13, 13 per for not grading, but just for authentic authentication. And so there's a stack of about 30 cards here. Here's the Herzog I got yesterday. I already have it in there. This Brooks Robinson card is one of my all-time favorite cards, not because it's autographed, just the regular version. And I didn't realize until I pulled it out of the case, this one's like really sharp. And even the centering is pretty good, not perfect. 
So that might be a rare occasion where I, I would consider getting a dual submission kind of thing for it. Because like I said, it's my favorite all-time card. I love the sawed-off bill. Uh, he actually, for those of you that don't know, he did that himself with like a saw in his garage, him and his son. Because he was worried that it was interfering with uh, being able to see pitches coming. Because this is uh, the first time that he ever had that had the ear flap on the other side. And his his claim was that as you look out the, at the corner of your of your eye to the left, that that <clears throat> ear flap, excuse me, was sort of blocking the vision with the uh, with the uh, the bill or whatever. Anyway, he thought it impeded his vision, so he chopped it off. And I love me some Brooks Robinson. I have lots of Brooks Robinsons. So 76, it's also a set I dabble in in 81. And there's a Goose Gossage Rhino. Uh, some sets, you know, not like my 64 and 73, I just get what I can and I don't build the entire set around it. So you might hear me say, like these 95 emotions, when I get one, I say, oh, there's a set hit. Um... It's not necessarily, when you check it out in my binder, all you're going to see is signed cards and all together and probably not in really any order. Um, if I put them in numerical order, then I would have all the gaps where I had the non-signed cards, wouldn't I? And I don't, I don't like the look of that. I, I like the aesthetic of a card being on every page. Here we go, the bell tray. Yes, I have been in my Hall of Fame stack, even though it's not official yet. It will be. And same with this guy. This was a TTM. I've never showed this one off. Max Scherzer, uh, before he went to um, to Washington, um, I got that TTM. Clayton Kershaw, I got this about four years ago probably, if he has spring training. And Richie Ashburn, this one I think I bought for pretty cheap, but I still like it. And these last couple are like certified things, but I still think they would just look good slab with all the other cards. So that is something I might just have to set a goal, goal, a smaller goal, like three a month or something, just so by the end of the year, I can say I've, I've taken a, a dent out of it because I don't, I don't know how else I'm going to do it. So that was two, three, get more autographs. Uh, I got one coming in next week. I got, I bought one that's already slabbed. That's going into my PC. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but um, it's pretty cool. It's somebody I, I talk about a lot because he's you know, one of my all-time favorite players. So I don't necessarily have to get these slabbed and do nothing else. I can keep buying, keep buying autos. Um, number four, I have something kind of new coming up. It's something I've sort of adopted from Baseball Collector, even though it's something I had thought about before. And it's a little different than than how he does it. But uh, I can't really say what it is because I want to reveal. I have a two-card reveal to, to launch it. And I don't want to spoil it right now. So there we go. So number five, even though this is base, Eddie's Baseball Autographs, I want to dabble in more just small sets, like things that I like. If I if I see something that's cool, maybe I'll maybe I'll build the set and it doesn't have to be signed. And that's sort of something that's new for me since I started on YouTube. Prior to YouTube, I was just all about autographs and I didn't even want to consider anything else. But I see these cool things you guys pull and things I didn't even know existed or things I had forgot about. And I'm breaking product. You see some of my stuff for, that I broke this year in the background. And I'm like, dang, that's really cool. So here's a good example. Um, you saw me get this trout lot in the other day. And it had this 2019 Bowman Chrome. Sorry, Topps Chrome. 1984 Topps, not reprint, but tribute. And I sat for, what, probably 45 seconds and did this because... These basically look like for refractors, even though they're technically not. And I thought, man, these are so cool. 
why why can't I just it's 25 card set why can't I start building it and I actually have a lot coming from a lot of about 15 uh, maybe more like 12 coming in from sport lots then I have two others I have Kikuchi and uh, Justice Sheffield so I've already got spaces in a in a binder and here I am building these little sets that I find really cool uh, one other set that I thought was really cool um, was from Chronicles, and it's called Caricature, and I don't really have any of those, but I'll be getting, probably putting those together on the cheap too. So, anyway, let's find a stand for that. Boop, we need something to look at in the background, and we're going to pick a rando, rando Hall of Famer. Ah, oh, well, no, not the Gaylord Perry, because we just... Got that the other day and talked about it. Jim Rice. Okay. This will be your clickbait for for when we're uh, picking the graphic. to The th thumbnail, I guess that's what I'm saying. Okay. So two more here. Um, oh. Like I said, this is Eddie's Baseball Autographs. But probably going to start sitting out to celebrities again, something I did quite a bit about 10, 12 years ago. And I mentioned it the other day because I got a George Went autograph in. And then I started toying with the idea of showing them off here, which I am going to do probably sometime in January. And I saw there's some other great channels out there where people are getting celebrity stuff in. And sort of gave me a thirst for it again. It might be a while before I do any send outs. But don't be shocked when you uh, when you see me open a TTM and it's not a baseball one. It hasn't happened yet, but at some point that will happen because I do have other interests. Um, you know, like for basketball, like I like my old Sonics, and for football, I like Seahawks, and 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 I like some celebrity and TV stuff. So um, we can violate the the channel name a little bit and without having to change it. So this last thing is most important, uh, collection goal number seven. And I really could have underlined enjoy and my and collection because what has been happening to me a little bit, and this is really pre prevalent on social media, and it's actually a huge problem for our young people, is you start comparing what you're doing and what you have to everyone else. And when you do that, you're you're never gonna have you're never gonna have enough. So I'm gonna slow down and take time. And if I want to sit here for without the camera on for 20 minutes and look at the cool cool refractorness of this non-refractor, then if that brings me joy, then that's a great thing. And same with just pulling out a binder and just looking through it and saying, Hey, I remember when I got this card or that's really cool. Or, here's a little, here's a little hole I want to fill. Maybe I'll make that a priority. Uh, everyone's collection is as unique as them. And I, I was guilty of sort of getting jealous and it's not cool. It's, it's not good. And I, I do this hobby because it makes me happy. So when I'm doing something that, makes me not happy, I change it. And same with uh, going to games. I, I left the Aqua Sox game last year because the fans just decided to boo everything the umpires did. And I wasn't having a good time and I left because I'm there to have a good time. And I, I collect for joy. And if something's making me unhappy, then I change it. So... A good example would be um, there's a former player who has a really awesome channel. And if you like seeing like high-end stuff pulled, you should check out his channel. Um, but what was happening was I was watching him pull, this, you know, Trout 101 autos and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, man, I wish I could pull something like that. But I can't, I can't spend whatever – thousands of dollars he's spending on this product and finally i'm like why am i watching this i'm making myself miserable so i just unsubscribed and i thought spending a bunch of money and pulling high-end stuff it just isn't that impressive to me 
So I'm, I'm happy for him that he can do that. I really am. If that's what he wants to do, he should do it. But I'd rather see uh, you know, Amio Firehands Tenny pull a, pull a trout out of a retail blaster for crying out loud. That's cool because, you know, that's, you know, like anyone could do that. And that's the kind of thing that, that I want to see and makes me happy for him because he didn't just basically pay for the autograph, which is what you're doing when you're buying high end. You're just proving you can spend money. So anyway, so I unfollowed that user and if, if doing that makes him happy, then that's great. I just, I'm not that impressed with it and it bums me out because then I get thinking, oh, I wish I could do that. When in reality, I have a really cool collection. And I'm just really grateful for everyone that watches the channel and comments. And we're going to have a great, great, great 2020. That's it for me. We'll see you next time.